Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Plays Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth episode 14. We're here. We need to suspect every suspicious nook and cranny once again for like the seventh time. Alright. Because the, the fat dude just came in and took over the investigation and was like, Oh, I've uh, come up with something and then there was something and then there were some things. And I was like, okay. So he's trying to protect his son, who has now been implicated in uh, this whole ring, which we saw from the beginning. But now it's going to be like, oh, his father just doesn't believe it or is just doing whatever he can to get him off anyway. You know? Alright. Could this gun be the actual murder weapon? Hmm, revolver data. Jot it down in my organizer. This bullet hole. It looks kind of burn around the edges. Wait, those burn marks were left by the gunpowder. This is a most important fact. Why is that? Because it is proof that the victim was shot at point blank range. Ooh, nice. Which means this costume was never done, uh, never involved in uh, the stage shooting because they were far away. All right. Very good. Very good indeed. Hmm, what's this? It looks like there's something inside the costume head. Hey, they sparkle. I bet they're really valuable. Sorry, but they're just pieces of a mirror. But why are they in here? Ooh, mirror fragments, dude. There was a broken mirror in the uh, in that one place. Nice. Well, are these not the most definitive pieces of evidence you've ever seen? Thank you, Dad. This should be enough to convince even Mr. Edgeworth over there. Make no mistake, there are fingerprints on that murderous gun. And they proved that it was Lolly who killed Oliver. But Oliver was also after Lolly's life. So Mr. Edgeworth, even you must see that Lolly was only acting in self-defense. The fingerprints on the weapon, huh? Oh no, this isn't helpful at all. Look, Mr. Edgeworth, all I want to do is save Lolly. But in the end, all I can do is watch on as she takes the punishment for her crimes. That may be all you can do, however... I still have a case to solve and a job to do. The job of unraveling your insidious lie. You wound me. Why wouldn't you believe me even in the face of all this evidence? All right, make no mistake, there are fingerprints on that murderous gun. Okay, so that's gonna be this revolver that we've just picked up. Let me look at this. Used to kill Deacon was originally stolen from guard by victim during escape. But they just... Wait, so this is Officer Meekins' gun? It says was originally stolen by guard, but they said that this weapon was never fired. They found Miss Pop's fingerprints on this gun. Can you let me hold it for a sec? I shouldn't if you don't know how to handle it. Besides, Miss Pops's prints are on it. Look, I'm wearing gloves. I'll be okay. I just want to take a look, that's all. It's not like I'm going to run off with it. The only things I don't return are treasures. Stealing either one would land you in jail, you know. All right, we've got... Got full chambers over here. But there's, like, nothing else to examine. Other than... Uh, can we zoom out, please? I said out. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's all we can examine. Alright then. Well, her fingerprints are on it, but this gun was never fired. But then it just said it was used to kill Deacon. This must be not Officer Meekins' gun. There are fingerprints on that murderous gun, indeed. This is the murderous gun, and there are fingerprints on it. All right. Mirror fragments. Okay. All right. 
Uh, let's press this. Those fingerprints. Are you sure they belong to Miss Pops? There's no mistake about it. Through my connections, I had the best forensics techniques money can buy performed. I find that to be a bit peculiar. What? Are you trying to pick an argument with me? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? <laughs> Frankly, I don't believe that Miss Pops's prints should be on that gun to begin with. And the reason why Miss Pop's prints should not be on the gun is... Oh, shit. Um, let's do a little bit of a save scum in here. The reason they shouldn't be on the gun is because the revolver itself was originally stolen from a guard. With this piece of evidence, there is no reason for her to have left prints at all. Which piece is that? Oh, shut up. All right, fine. The reason is... Hmm. Oh, she would have been uh, using her freaking costume, that's why. Would we do this? Let, which costume was she wearing? Vic, that's victim's costume. All right. I understand that she should not have left Prince because she's wearing a costume. But which cost? what do we then... Stolen costumes? Aha! It's simply not possible for Miss Pops to have left any prints on the murder weapon. Because while she was at the stadium, Miss Pops was wearing a costume. Huh? But there's been no mistake! We found fingerprints! Well, Miss Pops, do you remember touching the gun at all at any time? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I did hold it for a bit back in the hideout. I handed it off to Mr. Deacon when he and Lance left for the haunted house. To retrieve the ransom money, I suppose. And there you have it. That is when Miss Pops's prints found their way onto the gun. Grrr! Do you understand now, Mr. Romano? The fingerprints do nothing to prove that Miss Pops is the murderer. But you still don't have anything to prove that she isn't the killer, right? You seem very adamant about insisting that your girlfriend is a cold-blooded killer. Oh, Lance! What? No way! I'm incredibly worried about her! But that doesn't change the fact that you don't have any evidence, right? Hmm. That's where you're wrong. I have the evidence. What? How? The story that Ms. Pops killed the victim at the stage in the stadium. The whole affair is simply not true because that was not the real crime scene, but a setup. This proves that the real murder was not committed at the stadium at all. Um, is that going to be the mirror fragments? But they didn't have any... They were found inside the victim's costume. Why are they there in the first place? It might be too early for this. Uh, it was too early for that. Okay. I feel you. I feel you. But that would have been the point blank thing. The fact that it said that the dude... Where's the Bad Badger costume? Victim's costume. Here we go. Proof he shot by point blank. Aha! Let us take another good look at the costume the victim was wearing. Then I believe you will see why I insist he was not shot at the stadium. This is the part of the costume that proves it. All right, don't even need to save because this is obvious. I'll buy him. The burn around this bullet hole was made when the victim was shot at point blank range. Ah, so then you mean the murder Miss Oldbag saw at the stadium really was? Yes, she saw two people, but they were separated by a distance. If the victim was indeed shot from below the stage, there shouldn't be a gunpowder burn. Ah! Ha, huh, look at you, Mr. Smarty Pants Prosecutor. Since you seem to know all the answers, why not tell us where the real crime scene is then? Lance set me up to look like Mr. Deacon back at the hideout. If that's the case, then the murder must have happened prior to that. And the location where Lance and the victim were at just before I was imprisoned was... The place with the broken mirror. I've got it! I know the real scene of the murder! The real location in which Mr. Deacon was killed is here! Okay, I don't like that they're doing it via the map, because I don't understand the layout of this place. Um, it was in the wild, wild west, wasn't it? 
wasn't it? The real scene of the murder was here in the Wild Wild West area. The place where you and I first met, huh? But didn't you already check there? Oopsies. The haunted house. Oh, right, that's where I was kept. Yeah, okay, that's right, okay. Yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, all right. Okay, that's right, I get it, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, yeah, all right, all right, sure. I think it's not unreasonable to assume the murder took place in the haunted house. The haunted house? Yes, and I have proof that it is highly likely that the victim was killed there. What proves that the real scene of the crime was the haunted house? Why, it was the mirror fragments, of course! These were inside the costume the victim was wearing. They're fragments of a mirror. A mirror? And what does that have to do with anything? Indeed, you don't exactly expect to find pieces of a mirror inside a costume. Yeah, that's actually pretty dangerous. However, there is one place I can think of where there is a plethora of mirror fragments. And that is the haunted house. Lance Amano, I propose that you killed Mr. Deacon with the revolver in the haunted house. After that, you stole the blue badger mobile to move his body to the wild, wild west area. The timing of when the blue badger mobile was stolen confirms this as fact. Miles, my boy, say no more! I'm sorry, Mr. Romano, but I cannot do that. Be quiet. Yes, please, do something! Stop that boy from speaking any more nonsense! Ernest Amano, correct? I meant you. Now be quiet, Gramps. Uh, how dare you! I don't need words. The only thing I require is evidence. Decisive evidence. And to call these mirror bits decisive is a bit too presumptuous, Mr. Prosecutor. What? Sheena! Wasn't there a mirror in the kidnapper's hideout? Yes, there was a mirror there. A mirror that's for the haunted house. You see, isn't it possible the fragments got into the costume there? But Agent Lang, there were no fink fragments on the floor, so the probability is very low. Probability? <laughs> Lang Z says, on truth's path, the word probability does not exist. The only thing that does is definitive proof. The question, Mr. Prosecutor, is do you have the definitive proof you need? Well, Mr. Edgeworth, do you? Do I have solid evidence that proves the murder took place at the haunted house? The answer is no. See, so since you don't have any, shut up! I don't have the evidence yet, but... I'm certain the murder occurred around the time I turned the ransom over. At that time, the only people at the haunted house besides myself were Lance and Mr. Deacon. If I can prove that the murder took place at the haunted house, then I can prove Lance's guilt in connection to the murder. What now, Mr. Edgeworth? Agent Lang, I have a special request. Yeah? I'd like to prove to you that the scene of the crime was indeed the haunted house. Why in the world are you asking the werewolf for permission? Because I don't really have a choice if I want to find the truth. All right, permission granted. But you're not to touch a single thing, got it? That won't be a problem. All that's important to me is that the truth be brought to light. It doesn't matter by who or how it's done as long as it is. Tch. Sheena! I'm here. Put in the paperwork for the authorization immediately. Understood. I'll go get the Gatewater Group's approval. H who was that? Of course. Now, now. Let's hold on for a second. There is no need to obtain approval. Mr. Amano? Agent Lang, if you would please take a look at this. What is this? Sheena! It's... The deed to the haunted house. The deed? Read it out loud. Gatewater Land Incorporated hereby bequeaths the property known as the haunted house to Mr. Romano for the lump sum of one million dollars paid in full in cash. What? Oh, 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 as you can see, I am now the legal owner of the haunted house. Are you kidding? When did you? I ran into the owner of the park earlier and we made the deal almost immediately. How quickly things move when you can prepare a million dollars in the blink of an eye! That one million you paid! Don't tell me it was... Oh, that's right! This disgusting suitcase belongs to you, doesn't it? 
I don't have any more use for it, so you may have it back now. You used the ransom money? My Lance is a good boy. He even apologized for the kidnapping a bit earlier. Uh, so I do believe that I will forgive him. After all, he did return the ransom money. That's the way things are, so if you would please discuss things with me from now on. Discuss? What is there to discuss? Why, permission to enter the haunted house, of course. While we were busy listening to Lance's story, Mr. Amano was out there preempting us. Permission to search the haunted house is denied. End of discussion. Agent Lang, I want you to arrest that girl. And Miles, you should hurry on home now, my boy, before I really lose my temper. Ah, Mr. Romano definitely has the deck stacked in his favor here. What should I do? If I leave it like this, the truth will be lost forever. Oh! Dude, who said this case was bad? This is good. The dude's literally buying off the investigation. Alright, we'll save that. And then we'll also save it here. And then there's something really interesting happening over here. Like, there's just... I'm looking and I'm seeing something that I've never seen before in, like, the corner of my room. It's really interesting, and, like, I'm just looking at it, and I feel like i got to study it for at least a few more seconds and just be like, okay. All right, cool. That's all. No, it was fine. Oh, it turned out to be nothing. It turned out to... No, nah, it was a false alarm, of course. March 13th, 427, Gate Waterland Main Gate. Let's do it. If I can't get permission to investigate the crime scene, then the truth will be lost. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Okay. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you doing spacing out? Hold on, the music is like not coming in through here real quick. I hate this cord. Alright, I think that fixed it. Have you forgotten? There's only one thing you should do at a time like this. And what is that? When the people are in a bind, the hero of justice appears to save the day. Look, you just leave it to me. For I am Kay Faraday, the second of the great Yatagras. But I thought you were a thief, not a hero. The Yatagras is noble and is always a thief of justice. That's, of course. If we have enough information, I can recreate the inside of the haunted house with this. Plus, if we then factor in everyone's testimony, you can recreate exactly what happened when I dropped off the ransom money. We may be able to figure out some new information through this. It's worth the try. Dude, there's no way a device like this would be admissible in court, ever. Ever. <laughs> Absolutely ever. Agent Lang. Ah, so you want to use your little toy? Be my guest. Okay, hang on. You're all about to witness the true power of a real modern day Robin Hood. Detective Gumshoe. Is there a copy of the Haunted House's blueprint among the police's reference documents? Yes, sir. We got it just in case we needed it for the kidnapping case. All right, I'll input the Haunted House data then. W what is this? Where are we? It, it's like we're inside the Haunted House. Even if we can't inspect the real location itself, the path to the truth slumbers here. If I can successfully navigate my way using logic, I'll ultimately arrive at the truth. Now then, I believe I'm ready to investigate the crime scene. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, what should I recreate first? You haven't figured it out yet? Uh, maybe I have, and maybe I haven't. But I'm gonna make you do all the hard work. Very well. I'd like to inspect the moment in which I was ambushed by my abductor. The two of them were definitely in this place at that time. If I can verify that, it may provide me with a new lead. I had just come out into the hallway after leaving the money inside the dining room. At that time, I saw a badger slumped over on the floor at the end of the hall. Huh? What was a badger doing all the way down there? I also thought it strange. However, I thought that maybe it was simply a mannequin that was set there for an atmosphere. Do you know which badger it was? No, it was too dark to tell. All I saw was its silhouette. Hmm, in that case, I guess I'll just program a badger silhouette in for now. 
Okay, programming complete. Then I started walking towards the exit. And that's when you and that's when you were struck from behind, right? Yes. But that's odd. The hallway is a dead end. Where did your assailant come from? There is only one location I can think of. I believe my assailant was lying in wait here. It's got to be here, right? That doll I saw wasn't really a doll. It was, in fact, a costumed kidnapper. Oh, so he used the costume as the perfect camouflage to blend in with the rest of the house. Precisely. He waited until I had made the drop-off and was about to leave. Then, just as he saw me take a step towards the exit, he stood and launched his attack. I can think of no better hiding place than this. Hey, not bad. I'm beginning to think I should steal this tactic for myself. Just don't use it to do anything criminal, Kay. Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure that's exactly how he walked over to hit me with stuff. Well, Lance, what, what are you asking me for? As one of the kidnappers, I figured I should give you the chance to confess first. I was one of the kidnappers, but I don't know anything. I did come up to the haunted house, but I never set foot inside. I left Oliver in charge of picking up the ransom money. He didn't set foot inside. Is he telling the truth, or is this another lie? All right, then you're claiming that it was Mr. Deacon who assaulted me? Yes, I'm sure it was him. Okay, inputting the new info now. Mr. Deacon was the Bad Badger, right? Since the Bad Badger has a gun attached to its right hand, I'll have to change it so the weapon is in its left hand. Now, to verify the facts of this recreation. Um, which side of the head were you hit on, or was it just the back, you know what I'm saying? You didn't recreate the weapon. Well, I can't exactly recreate something I know nothing about. So tell me, what were you hit with? The attack came from behind, so I have no idea. But I doubt it was someone's bare hands. Um, okay, then where were you hit? I was hit on the right side of my head. Yep, there you go. Just above my temple. There was a bit of blood, but it wasn't anything serious. Ouch, sounds painful. Why are you smirking like that when you say it? It's just your imagination. Now let's see. I wonder if there's anything in the hallway that could have been used as a weapon. I'm looking for something the culprit could have used to hit you with. Hmm. Broken prop sword? Like before it was broken? I'm seeing no He hit me with the the bike, didn't he? Just he just picked up that giant thing and threw it at me? I'm gonna say prop sword. I have it. There was indeed one such object lying here in this hallway. A prop sword. Are you talking about this thing here? Yes. Although we did find it at the kidnapper's hideout. Wait, yes, it's possible that the culprit took it with him after using it on me. To leave no evidence behind, right? Correct. It may be worth a more thorough examination yet. Okay, so what test do you want to run on this sword? Test with luminol for blood? Dust for prints? Well, it no don't need a dust for prints because he's wearing the costumes. We'll do that. Oh man, uh, what's going on? My web camera's malfunctioning. That's, that is so strange. I, I just don't know how I'll even solve this problem. Wow, that just came out of absolutely nowhere. Hmm, if I use my amazing hacking skills that I learned at Quantico, I can maybe bring it back. Ah! Okay. The culprit was wearing a costume at the time, so a fingerprint analysis is useless. Oh, I have to click back. In the game. 
Let's run a luminol test. It's possible that some of my blood found its way onto this. Agent Lang, may I ask for your cooperation in this matter? Hm. Like I have a choice. Sheena, call the lab boys. Understood. I'm gonna have to find a voice for her. Except for a dab on the left side, it would appear that the blade is spotless. So it must have been the left side of the prop sword that hit you then, right? Broken prop sword data updated. Good. Okay, I'll update the new recreation with the piece of info. Won't rest till I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Alright, I deduce that this is wrong. Because, uh, the swords, um, that, yeah. <laughs> Finally, I found a clear contradiction of facts about this sword. Except for a bit on the left side, this prop sword is absolutely spotless. However, if the culprit had used his left hand, the blood would be on the opposite side. The opposite side? Huh? If the culprit held the sword in his left hand, then the sword's right side would hit. I see, but the blood was on the left side of the sword, right? Which means that he used his right hand to hit you. Exactly. The prop sword has a large handguard attached to the hilt. It would be impossible to hold it with two hands while wearing a costume with such big hands. Therefore, if it couldn't be the left hand or both hands, it must have been the right. I'll change the data to reflect a right-handed swing. Not yet, Kay. There's no sense in changing anything yet. If you change the parameters to the right hand, it'd only create a new contradiction. Changing the prop sword to be in the culprit's right hand would conflict with... Why it would conflict with the, uh, missing model gun. Right? Alright, now, is that... what you use? Like, right? Isn't it? Let's make sure. This is the stuff of nightmares, by the way. The Bad Badger already holds a gun in his right hand, so he can't hold a sword in addition. Hey, that's right! Then what now? If it wasn't in his left or his right hand... It means that the one who struck me could not have been the Bad Badger. Are you paying attention, Lance? Ugh. Mr. Deacon could not have been the one who struck me, which leaves only you as our primary suspect. Ugh. Fine! It was me! I hit you! It appears that you lied to me yet again, but see how quickly they catch up to you, Lance. Wait, isn't Lance left-handed? Ah, yes. But that's what makes this deception all the more interesting. He used his right hand to make it look like Mr. Deacon had been the one to strike me. For you see, firing a gun with one's non-dominant hand is difficult. But that level of dexterity isn't required to swing a prop sword. Ah! Kay. Please input this new data. The one who hit me from behind was Lance, or should I say, the Proto-Badger. You got it! Here I go! Now we have a faithful recreation of the situation around the attack on me. Alright! All we have to do is examine this new recreation and... <laughs> and what exactly is so funny, Agent Lang? That amusing little gadget. It sure packs a punch, right, Sheena? Yes. It was all I could do to hold my laughter in. Hey, don't make fun of Little Thief, you mean old werewolf. He and Mr. Edgeworth bring out the best in each other. You've had your little fun, but now it's my turn. I've sat quietly by, listening, but the crude conclusions you two keep spewing don't whet this wolf's appetite. There's no guarantee that your toy will always show the real situation at any given time. All it displays is whatever information you put in there, right? Well, when you put it that way, your suppositions are wrong. It's not your fault, so I'm gonna let you in on this. There is a trick to this haunted house. And what may that be exactly? A trick beyond what your tiny imaginations can produce. Shina! Here you are. Now then, what you missed, girly, is written right here in this pamphlet. 
The Seven Wonders of the Haunted House, The Disappearing Badger. What is this? I'd say that someone around here is fond of theatrics. And as you can see, they set a doll down at the end of this hallway for that purpose. Basically, the blue badger you saw was just a stupid doll. H how can this be? Guess that throws your old theory about it being your attacker right out the window. Gah! But, but that can't be right. Maybe the culprit hid the doll somewhere. And then he laid down and pretended to be it instead. If the criminal couldn't even hide himself in the hallway, how could he hide a giant doll? Hm. Do you get it now? Thanks to your presumptions, your logic started off weak and led you to the completely wrong conclusion. Gah! Now get off your high horse! Mr. Edgeworth! Okay. I wonder if you could please input the new information for me. You don't know when to quit, do you? I can't quit, not until I can declare that I found the truth. Agent Lang, for the additional information, you have my thanks. Tch, there you go again. We'll see if I care. Okay, I'm updating the recreation now. That looks really weird. Look at how it changes from the blue badger into the proto badger all of a sudden. If the slumped over badger was just a doll, where was my attacker hiding? Well, that's what we're going to find out, right? So come on, Mr. Edgeworth, let's go! Yes, let's. This recreation can't be right, which means there must be a contradiction somewhere. Hmm. Why are there three of them? Okay, that's... Blue Badger. This is also the Blue Badger. This is the Proto Badger. This is where the Proto Badger shows up in our recreation. Okay, this is the Proto Badger. Yes, now the question is, where did he come from? Yeah, but there's no place to hide in our current model. There must be an inconsistency somewhere. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Alright, so this is a proto badger. It's a blue badger? I thought the proto badger was the one with the belt. Is it not? Is it the other way around? Let me look at this. No, show me the freaking Bible. Show me the. Okay, this is World War II, I suppose. That's. No, okay, I need the Bible. It's very offensive. I can't believe they would call it that. They insensitive or what? All right. You're the proto badger. The blue badger has the belt. Okay. All right. Oop! I pressed the wrong button. Gosh darn it! All right. Uh, yeah. This blue badger is just a doll for use in this haunted house. I bet the one who killed this blue badger was the bad badger, right? According to the blue badger bible, it says that they are each each other's worst enemy. All because one's an ally of just- All because one's an ally of justice and the other's a vile criminal with a gun? Perhaps they were just destined to battle each other. Much like the steel samurai and the evil magistrate. Okay, but there's nothing else to examine here? And the reason for that is... Hmm... Hmm... Yeah... I mean, we obviously have to do something with the costume, because it's the only piece that there is. If this is the blue badger... 
I legitimately have no idea what angle I'm trying to come at this from. Except maybe the stolen costumes. Uh, nope, not the stolen costumes, okay. So I thought maybe they'd stolen too many costumes and it didn't fit. I have Badger's head, no. Mr. Deacon's murder notes, no. Not the photo rally, not the Bible. Not the victim's costume. They're trying to say this. They're trying to say this is just a random ass doll that nobody was in. That's what they're trying to say. Um, so as a result of that, as a result of that, uh, it's not that either. Okay, so as a result of that, hey, got it. Hold on a second here, there's something wrong with this blue badger. Huh? Like what? The way the belt is on him is opposite of how it should be. Did you make a mistake? That can't be! I inputted the image data exactly as it is in the pamphlet! So then, why is the blue badger dressed up in reverse? Um, because he's being seen through a mirror! When you take a look around, it almost feels more like a house of mirrors. Indeed. Who has ever heard of this many mirrors inside of a haunted house before? Well, at least we know this is the real crime scene thanks to these mirror shards. Exactly. Hey, wait! These shards! There's something different about them! Oh? The ones we found earlier are thicker than the shards from these mirrors on this wall! And look! There's some sort of design on the back, too! Yeah, because it's a one-way mirror. Or a two-way mirror. That's what I mean. The pieces from that costume are certainly different from the other mirrors. What does this mean? Could it be that our pieces are not pieces of these mirrors? Mm. Alright, we can definitely logic this. Okay, do you remember what you said earlier? What I said earlier about what? About how this building might as well have been a house of mirrors. A house of mirrors? Oh! Uh, that would explain the reversed, or, mirror image! Yes, this blue badger might be nothing more than the reflected image of a real one. Then, was the blue badger you saw just a reflection? When I looked down this hall, I thought it was perfectly straight. However, if there was a mirror... Oh! Then it would actually form an L-shape, right? Oh! Precisely. I was deceived. The hallway was almost pitch black, and there was a beam in the way that obstructed my view of the other hallway. Wait, but why build this place like that? It sounds pretty pointless to me. Okay, this house is just another attraction at an amusement park. They created a mirror wall for a very specific purpose, one I can point out to you. This was the reason they built a mirror wall. Oh boy. Well, the reason they built a mirror wall... is uh, the pamphlet. Where is, uh, where's the pamphlet at? The Gay Water Land Pamphlet, baby. As it's written in the pamphlet, the main draw of this attraction is the mis- is the mist- is the mystery of the disappearing badger. You mean they built the mirror for that trick alone? But you said you saw the badger, so it was definitely still there. That was true at the time, however. Doing this allows someone to make the blue badger disappear in a flash. Move the mirror wall. It's gotta be move the mirror wall, right? You move the mirror wall. To remove a reflected image, simply move the mirror. First, the mirror was constructed so that it could be moved. Then, beyond where the mirror was, an empty hallway had to be created. Oh, so when they wanted people to see the blue badger, they would open the mirror. And when they wanted to hide it, they simply had to close it again. Oh, that's what you said. This explains why the other side of these fragments have a design on them. Ah, and if the pattern is the same as the other walls in this hallway, then when the mirror is closed, it would blend in with the rest of the walls. This is the mirror trick that this haunted house employs. 
And this also proves the existence of a hiding place for the culprit. Huh? How so? Think about it, Kay. There was a place that was outside my field of vision. The culprit kept out of sight by hiding here. There was a very large blind spot, one I could not see beyond, and it was here. If my assailant hid on the other side of the movable mirror, then you wouldn't be able to see him. He didn't even need to do anything to the Blue Badger doll. Exactly. All he had to do was wait for me on the other side of the mirror. Wait, hold on. I just thought of something. Yes? Well, shouldn't the mirror wall be broken right now in reality? Hmm, since we have a few shards of it, we can probably assume it is. Yes, it most definitely is broken. The question is, when was it broken? Since we found these inside the victim's costume, that would mean that the victim was there when the mirror was broken. Wait, that sound. Leave the money and go. Now. That sound I heard was most definitely the sound of a mirror breaking. Okay, I'd like you to input some new information. Ah! Don't scare me like that! Sorry, but I need you to recreate something for me. Sure, whatever you need. So what do you need anyway? If you could first recreate this hallway just before I entered the dining room. You got it! Now this, I believe this is how it was right before I entered the dining room. Although at the time I thought it was but a single straight hallway, and then I went inside. It was around then that I heard the sound of a mirror shattering. You heard what? Then? Yes, I believe it was then that the mirror was broken. Okay, so when you stepped outside into the hallway again, the mirror wall should no longer exist. Kay, please recreate that. Got it. Wait, but with the mirror gone, the culprit lost his hiding spot. So where did he go in his proto-badger suit, Mr. Edgeworth? Ha, huh, that's easy enough. With the mirror gone, he simply hid himself in the branch hallway. Hmm, I think this about wraps it up. Looks like we finally solved everything. No, not yet. An even larger contradiction has now reared its head. Huh? Perhaps you did not notice. But this recreation contains a very troubling inconsistency. The inconsistency between what I saw and the recreation lies... The mirror wall's broken, then you shouldn't have been able to see this dude. Or you shouldn't have been able to see that entire area. Here! Huh? Are you sure that contradicts what you saw? Ah, uh, well, that's something even I must look into a bit more. God damn it. What do you mean? Here. Take that. Okay. Okay, take a good look at the end of the hall. Oh, there's no blue badger there. Exactly, the blue badger that I saw in reality is not here. This is the final point on this long chain of logic, the last remaining contradiction. So let me get this straight, when you came out of the dining room, you saw a badger, right? And that is precisely where the final contradiction lies. Something that shouldn't exist was there before me. Who or what do you suppose it was? I believe this is the real identity of our mystery badger. Why... It's the victim, Mr. Deacon. The victim's costume, that is. Take that. <laughs> the badger I saw was in actuality the dead victim's body. Uh, what? Agent Lang, the entirety of my complete logic is my final decisive piece of evidence. The murder happened in the hallway of the haunted house at the time of the drop-off, and you can consider the moment I heard the mirror breaking 
to be the real time of death for Mr. Deacon. No! Maybe it was due to their fighting, or perhaps it was the life-shattering bullet. But no matter what the cause was, the hallway mirror wall was broken. Ha! You were in the house at the time, right? You telling me you missed the sound of a gunshot? There were a variety of sound effects playing at the time. All for the theatrics, I assume. The gunshot must have blended right in. Yeah! Now then, I'd like you to recall something for me. Who was it that was with the victim at the haunted house? Uh. Who was the one who had the opportunity to rob the victim of his gun and use it on him? Uh. It was you, Lance Amano! Damn, he's strong. Ooh, and his ears just got so disgusting. Oh my god. I'm sorry! It's not like I had a choice! Oliver turned on me all of a sudden! He snapped and turned violent right after I hung up with you! He shoved me to the ground and straddled me! I fought back as hard as I could, grabbed his gun, and I shot him! The bullet must have went through his body and shattered the mirror! If I hadn't taken his gun and shot him first, I would have been the one you found! He's a hardened criminal! He's escaped from jail! See? That's justified self-defense! My boy was only trying to protect himself! That remains to be seen and will have to be resolved in court. Agent Lang, I leave the rest to you. Ha! Huh, as if you were the one in charge around here. Guys, arrest these two and get them out of my sight! Wait! I had nothing to do with the murder! The only person you should be arresting is Lance! D dad Sorry, but you're not slipping away that easily, Mr. Ernest Amano. You tampered with the evidence so you could cover for your son. What a great dad you are, willing to risk it all. Truly touching. Grr. By the way, do you know why I'm really here? And how could I possibly know the answer to such an asinine question? You wound me. I came all this way from across the sea just to see you, you know? You came to see me? What's that supposed to mean? I have a few things to ask you, Mr. Romano, about a case from ten years ago. A case from ten years ago? Oh, what's the name that you use here for that case? Sheena! It's known as the KG-8 Incident. Now, there always has to be a something-something incident. The KG-8 incident? Oh, so you remember it. Good. Then you'll recall that the trigger in that case was the Amano Group scandal. Specifically, the charge of an internal smuggling ring. Smuggling. There's that word again. At the time, the person that was arrested as the ringleader was Mr. Amano's very own secretary, Mr. Colin Deveray. Ah, uh, father! Even though you pushed the crime onto your then-secretary, Mr. Deveray, or Mr. Deveray, I always suspected that you were involved with the smuggling ring, Mr. Amano. Mr. Deveray was arrested in place of you, which is why when he broke out, you hid him from the police, right? You hid him in exchange for his silence on your little dirty secret. Now, 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 now! Please calm down. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Ha! Huh. Pretend to be ignorant all you want. We're taking you down to the precinct anyway for a nice long chat. What the- who the heck was that? I'll take him down to the precinct if you don't mind. And who the heck are you? I'm Jacques Portsman, and I'm the prosecutor in charge of this case. Oh, Jacques, thank goodness you're here. Don't jerk me around. This is an Interpol case, so keep your paws off of my suspect. Sorry, but I can't comply. I've got the backing of the prosecutor's office. See, in this country, we prosecutors work with the police to bring cases to court. So if you could please cooperate with me here, that'd be great. Now, how about a handshake to seal the deal? Sorry, but I hate prosecutors, the whole lot of you. 
Guys, arrest the two suspects. Sir. Oh, I almost forgot. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, is it? I'd like to thank you. Thank me? Yeah, for working so hard to fulfill my goal. Hey, is that any way to thank someone? And what the heck is that supposed to mean? You were so relentless with Lance that you forced Ernest to tamper with the evidence. Thanks to that, I finally had a legitimate reason to arrest him. So, how does it feel to bite the hand that feeds you? The hand that feeds me? I'm not sure I follow. Ha! Huh. It's no use pretending with me. You're the one, right? You're the corrupt prosecutor that's working for Mr. Romano and the smuggling ring, right? No, I would never do such a thing. Che, what the heck? Our intel's never wrong. In your prosecutor's office, there's definitely someone working with the ring. Ah, so Agent Lang suspected my relation to Mr. Romano. That must be the real reason behind his antagonistic attitude. On top of that, your mentor was Manfred von Karma, right? There were non-stop rumors flying around about forged evidence with that guy. You're not twisting the truth behind those closed courtroom doors too, are you? The courtroom is a place where the truth is revealed. <laughs> well, don't worry. It's not only you. The whole lot of you can't be trusted. A prosecutor who never lost in 40 years, every defendant must be found guilty? Fueled by those ideas, is it any wonder that courts produce nothing but falsities and lies? It would seem that his disdain extends beyond just me. Prosecutors, the courts, why is this man so angry with us all? Rest assured, the next time we meet I won't be so forgiving. So don't you forget it. Oh, they have a cool little hand gesture. Please, wait. Agent Sheena, why does Agent Lang hate all prosecutors so? Lang is the head of the long-honored House of Lang in Zhengfei. The heads of all police-related divisions in that country were of Lang blood. Were? What do you mean by that? Aren't they still? They were revered, but that was long ago. They don't hold that sort of sway anymore. And it was all because of the courts. How can that be? A prosecutor once withheld and tampered with the evidence one of the Lang detectives found. That evidence's purity was tarnished and cost the Lang family its honor and trust. But not all prosecutors are like that. Even so, Lang will never respect the court again, or any prosecutor. So Agent Lang is a man who hates all courts and is unwilling to forgive prosecutors. Man, what a piece... Man, what a piece of work that guy is! Come on, Jim, we'd better catch up. Yeah. We've still got to deliver that thing to the old man, after all. Oh, so this is before... Okay. This is before we arrested him. And so he is obviously the corrupt prosecutor. Detective Gumshoe, I believe it's time we wrapped up and headed home ourselves. Yeah, are you going home too, Mr. Edgeworth? No, I've done nothing but be entangled in one mess after another since my return. If it's alright with you, can you drop me off at my office? No problem, sir. Um, excuse me? Yes, what is it? Um, ah, uh, that is, thank you very much! Oh, it's okay. No need to thank me, pal. Just doing my job as a detective. I guess I was fooled pretty badly by Lance. Oh, cruel fate! What's a woman to do when she's been hurt by the one she loves? And to think I never realized my father was right there! I never said anything to him! I knew it! I'm... I'm, I'm a failure! Ah, there she goes again, talking to herself. Miss Pops, I wonder if you know why your father participated in the kidnapping. No, I have no idea! Your father died while he was trying to stop Lance which means that from the beginning he had no interest in the stage self-abduction. Wait, then why did he... I believe it was because of your presence, Miss Pops. Me? Lance realized that the two of you were related, which is why he used you as a hostage to coerce Mr. Deveray into cooperating. Father! As a felon, he could not tell you of his real relation to you. However, as the Amano family butler, at the very least, he was able to watch over you. It was all he could do, but... That was the shape of his overflowing love for you. Hmm. 
Go on, speak your mind. I, 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 um, uh, that is, thank you very much. You're welcome, although there is no need to thank me. Uh, no, Lauren, stop. I mean, this man's so much older than you. He <laughs> looks like you've completely stolen her away, Mr. Edgeworth. Way to go, sir. Your technique is way beyond the level of a great thief. What are you going on about now? Wow, your deducing skills may be sound, but you have no street smarts. That's Mr. Edgeworth for you. Yeah, I mean, he still hasn't figured out who I am at all. If you haven't remembered in all this time, I guess I'm just gonna have to say it. This isn't the first time we've met, you know. What do you mean, pal? Mr. Edgeworth, how do you know this girl? Hm. Looks like you totally forgot me too, Gummy. Gummy? Here, maybe this will jog your memories. I promised I'd return this to you one day, remember? That's... That single piece of cloth took me back far into my past. To that fateful day seven years ago when I first met the then child, Kay and Detective Gumshoe. Ooh, I wanna know about that. Oh, this was a hella long episode. Um, that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Sunburn and I will see you guys next time.